Tech Ultimate Gohan. It's been almost three years after his release, and it's fair to say that he's one of the best aging Dokkan Fest TYs, and is competing with the likes of AJ Golden Freezer and STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta for best aging units. I would argue that he's much stronger now than he was on release due to his links being more accessible and the way the game's difficulty is scaled, but I'm presuming that not even the developers intended for his reign in the meta to last as long as it has done, and ultimately his design juxtaposes the true intention behind these Gacha games. In this video, we'll be discussing Tech Ultimate Gohan and how his release negatively affected the release of defensive oriented units going forward. Essentially, he's Dokkan's biggest regret and to an extent, ruined Dokkan. So beginning with strengths, what makes him so sublime? Simply put, greatly raising attack and defense and guards all attacks. The Dokkan developers, in my opinion, have not been this scared since 7,000 attack attacks effective against all types. In fact, question time, question time of the video, what character in Dokkan possesses this as their passive? Whoever gets it right gets a, I don't know, a virtual cookie or something. I'm not too sure. Anyway, greatly raising attack and defense is a permanent 50% raise to both stats. To illustrate how powerful this is, we have some defensive of cards for a 55% and a 100% ultimate Gohan. Since this video is hyper focusing on Gohan through a defensive lens, we will not take a look at his offensive numbers, but as you can see, it doesn't take too many stacks for Gohan's defense to start flying. And what's more interesting is that he is one of only three units in Dokkan with this SA effect. Onto the second but equally important aspect of Gohan's kit, guards all attacks. Most will know this as the downward facing arrow when taking hits from enemies, as demonstrated by this diagram from Noob Legend, it is a very powerful defensive tool as a guarding unit gains the 0.8 times modifier, the 0.8 times type modifier, which is applied to enemy stats, and then the guard modifier of 0.5 is applied after taking into account the enemy offensive values against the unit's defensive value. A quick side note, damage reduction units work slightly different or differently as their damage reduction percentage is applied from the get-go. So you can see we're combining infinite stats with essentially type advantage. It becomes very easy to see why he's aging like an absolute champ. With Gohan releasing as a 2020 Dokkan Fest, he has spanned four eras of Dokkan content. Extreme Super Battle Road, the Gathering of the Gods of Destruction, God Event, Red Zone, and then our latest, Cell Max. And I'm happy to say that he only started to slow down with the Cell Max event, and even then, through no fault of his own, rather the event being a gimmick style event. On release, he dominated Extreme Super Battle Road. In fact, he was one of a select few who had the capacity to survive a barrage of super attacks. Similarly, he dominated the God Event, an event made for the 6th year anniversary unit. For those who were unlucky during the 6th year anniversary, one of the most popular and viable strategies utilized STR Super Vegito, Tech Ultimate Gohan, and then finally Tech Khalifa as the core of your team. Red Zone, yet again, was not a problem for Gohan, even against the likes of Red Zone Omega, his defense does not falter. Cell Max is a slightly different story as the first two phases are as tough as a Dokkan event, with the final phase seeing a monumental increase in difficulty. To put it into perspective, Cell Max's attack stat and super attack value rise by 292% and 390% respectively when comparing the physical second phase to the tech third phase. And as we approach the eighth year anniversary, it'll be interesting to see whether we get a new piece of endgame content, such as like the the blue ultra zone or something to that effect and whether Gohan holds up. So you're probably wondering, how did Gohan ruin Dokkan or how did he change the landscape for defensive units? And well, it mainly comes down to the guard ability. If we take a look at the six other units who possess the guard ability without activation restrictions, three of them predate Gohan's release, whilst the other three succeed Gohan's release. And the irony of all of this is the dichotomy among the performance of said units. Int Janemba released alongside STR Super Gogeta, and the main passive traits were opposites of each other, guard versus being type effective. Suffice to say, Inja Number was one of the best units in the game on release due to his guarding and his sizable flat boost passive, which at the time was still the norm. SDR Junemba likewise was one of the strongest 120 leader score units due to his guard, stable percentages and evasion chance. And then finally we have SDR Super Saiyan 3 Goku, who whilst was locked to the Dragon Ball Heroes team, was one of the most impressive defensive units not only in 2019, but as a whole, as he also possessed up to 35% damage reduction. Post Gohan's release, we first have Tech Janemba, a very bizarre unit, as his orb requirements to activate further damage reduction and support were 
and still is very difficult. Orb changing would have made it far easier to collect four type key spheres as well as the two rainbow key spheres. And once he transforms into Super Janemba, for an even more confusing reason, he loses the ability to guard, even though Dokkan has established that the guard ability is Super Janemba's primary trait. After that, we have LR Grade 8 Vegeta. He's an AoE unit who guards all attacks, but he needs to perform his 18 key super attack to receive his necessary 120 defensive buff, his 120% defensive buff, and his link set as well. Finally, we have STR Piccolo, who's almost flawless. You could even make the case that with the arrival of LR Orange Piccolo, he is better than Ultimate Gohan, as he seals, provides a support buff, and possesses damage reduction in tandem with his guard. That being said, his damage reduction is locked to the movie hero's category, and without it, he would struggle defensively. Beyond this set of units who are guaranteed to guard, we have a plethora of units who have restrictions in place for their guard to activate. LR Super Janemba needs to be in slot one or two for his guard. His inherent weakness is that due to his defensive caliber, he's always in slot 1, which restricts the buildup of key and further percentages, the latter of which is needed as his base defensive percentage is a measly 120% and he has zero defense raising as super attack effect. LR Vegeta and Trunks, one of the best units in the game, their guard is locked to slot 1 post 5 turns, which is far from the biggest issue on this list, but it's yet another restriction and can make team building difficult if you're running two of them and one of them will be used as floaters. LR Carnival Goku truly has one of the most flawless designs in Dokkan, as his guard is dependent on your HP. The moment you fall below 59% health, he becomes vulnerable, but it's for the purpose of his revival skill to activate, which then grants him unrestricted guard. However, the only issue there is that if you're running the 200% powerful comeback team, the secondary Carnival Goku will obviously lose his guard if you fall below 59% health or less because you're only locked to using one rival skill in a singular fight. Furthermore, there's STR Gohan, EZA Physical, Super Saiyan Bardock, LR Goku and Piccolo, and the list goes on. The point I'm trying to illustrate is that since Gohan's release, guaranteed to guard units have been far less frequent in release. And for those units who possess the ability, they release with other shortcomings, whether it be weird link sets, slot restrictions, active skill requirements, a percentage chance of happening, certain category characters being on the team or rotation. And deep down, I feel as if Gohan was the point of singularity for this. The developers realized the monster they had created, therefore if guarding units were going to be released going forward, they would be hampered in a particular aspect to compensate for the mistake known as Tech Ultimate Gohan. Now of course Gohan possessed and still possesses flaws, such as lackluster offense, but I want to focus on his poor link set. He released with quite the bizarre amalgamation of links, brainiacs, cold judgment, power bestowed by guard, revival, and then Saiyan lineage. And even today, in 2023, Gohan does not share more than four links with anyone, which for me is testament to how they wish to leave him alone. However, even this shortcoming became a strength. The Saiyan lineage is a link which has been continually buffed throughout his release. And these are just a fraction of units who possess the link. Not to mention that he also builds up to three key via his passive, which can make super attacking light work on his third appearance. So where does that leave us? We are less than one month away before the 8th anniversary and I have no doubt that Gohan will prove useful for the anniversary content. And nobody truly knows when his usefulness will expire, not that it matters as his easier will make him relevant again, whenever that is, and that will probably most likely spark, re-spark the debate of Gohan versus Cooler, but Dokkan didn't read the situation correctly. The guard ability is extraordinarily potent. However, regardless of how you look at it, 50% attack and defense every super is completely busted. Most stacking units receive 30% attack and or defense, but they made Gohan the first unit in Dokkan to stack attack and defense by 50% with guard. A true pioneer in the realm of defensive Dokkan units, and unfortunately, he's been the downfall of guarding type units ever since. Thank you for watching. If you agree, disagree, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, then please consider hitting that sub, maybe even sharing, maybe even commenting or liking the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.